Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series premiere of Swamp Thing, as well as the latest episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like always, if I'm talking about something that you want to listen to, you can always look in the description down below, include a time to start talking about each of the respective shows. So, for example, if you don't want to hear what I said about the series premiere of Swamp Thing, you can skip to what I had to say about this week's episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but the first thing I'm going to talk about is... The series premiere of Swamp Thing. A great series premiere. I, I talked about it before and even more so now that we're, it's finally here. Like, it does not feel like a superhero show. Because obviously, especially this entire episode doesn't feel like a superhero show. It feels like something out of like, you know, like I brought up before, like a horror movie or a monster movie. I mean, immediately. And it's so interesting, too, because that was something I brought up when I was looking at the trailer. I was like, okay, we see people getting killed by roots and stuff like that. But I was like, was that actually Swamp Thing doing it? Because other times you see him later on in trailers, it seemed like he was just fighting people, not straight up killing them. So I was like, was that like like the swamp itself or was that something else entirely and it seems like it's the swamp itself like and it's so interesting because because obviously like uh marie it seems like marie sorry seems like the town where it's like it's kind of basically like a mining town where it's like that mine where typically in a mining town like the mine is the foundation of a lot of the businesses and just where the town gets a lot of its money it seems like the swamp plays it's the foundation for marie and so it's interesting because I saw it even went, went as far as being like, oh, it's the swamp getting payback. So, and I think that's such an interesting thing. It seems like the swamp itself is a sentient thing, which I would have never guessed that because I would have figured like the sentient thing within all of this would have just been swamp thing. But it seems like, no, like the roots are growing and not just growing. They are like almost – they are turning into hunters. I think like the swamp has kind of gained consciousness to a certain extent. I mean to be, be fair, it's not that crazy of an idea considering the fact is like – Plants are living, breathing things, so it's like this mutagen might be accelerating them to the point that they gain some form of intelligence. That I mean, I think you can already say they have intelligence, but the fact is that they operate the way they do, you know, because everything, even if it's just existing on instinct, you know, plants and everything kind of operate on some path that's kind of in their genetic code so i'm thinking we're seeing that with the plants in this one straight up murdering everyone at the beginning that was crazy i actually felt bad for the, the dude that got stabbed through uh interesting note that's the actor who played todd in black lightning so it's interesting dc to dc i just think that's kind of interesting um i should also note another thing you might know him from is he was the blue ranger in the uh 2017 uh mighty morphin power rangers movie that's kind of like the first thing I kind of knew him from, and then like, oh, I brought that up when I brought up him being, you know, when he was, nevertheless, it, I'm, I was about to go on a tangent, it's not important, I just lost the point, nevertheless, it's just, I just thought that was kind of interesting, and what's interesting too is like to show you how intelligent the plants are, the dude's trying to get away, the last dude's getting away, and they literally like, the plants and roots come together to make it so it's almost like a path blocking him, like, oh, we see you running this way, so it's interesting to see that. Um, obviously, we have Abby, you know, coming back to hometown, who Abby played by Crystal Reed, something you might know her for, obviously, uh, she's been in a few things, but obviously the thing I best know her from is playing Allison in Teen Wolf, the TV show, so that was pretty dope, but it's also interesting, much like the actor who plays Todd, she also has a DC connection in the sense that uh, in Gotham, she played Sophia Falcone, Dawn Falcone's daughter, so it's so interesting to see her DC to DC, so I just think that's so uh, fascinating, so like... I'd almost kind of let that slip my mind until like I was like, uh, that just that to me is so cool. Uh, but nevertheless, Abby obviously is working with the CDC, and you know we kind of immediately already get who Abby is. Is she's the type of person that she's willing to risk her, risk her own health because it's like yeah, there's some kids, you know, that brother trying to protect his sister, and she's taking off all her gear. It's like you could have gotten sick, but for her, it's like it meant saving someone else's life, so she was fine. Later on, well. The fact is, she comes back to town because Murray is her hometown, and obviously this whole situation she wants to help deal with. But the moment she goes in there, like, they get back, there's, like, a cross and, a, like, you know, some flowers, like a grave at the bridge, and you see, like, some girls, like, you know, it's Abby, obviously, looking back on the past. I was like, okay. And you see one of them standing on a bridge. I assume just because of that, that maybe she had died on a bridge, which still could be the case, but I thought, like, maybe she had, you know killed herself or something like that and you know abby felt responsible i thought that might be the case well well the fact of the matter is i'll kind of get to it but um obviously uh maria who's played by uh, virginia madsen she was in american gothica i swear there was something else specifically i knew her from but i just can't remember like obviously most recently interestingly enough uh she's reprising her role as Paige 
on elementary, so it's just kind of interesting, like days apart. That you know, so uh, it, it just I just thought it was kind of interesting, Tommy. Mean, it's just interesting how stuff works out like that. But obviously, we see Maria. It's not just Maria. It's just the Sunderland uh, family's issue with Abby. I mean, at in period, it's because the fact is their daughter died, and it's like you got to live your life, but it's like obviously Maria still holds a grudge. Now, my thought process is though, like. Because Abby brings it up later on, like she's like, I killed her. So I'm wondering, is it a situation of, was it like, oh, they got drunk or they got high, um, and maybe her friend, like uh, Shauna, their daughter, Abby's best friend, killed herself, or, but the fact is Abby, so that's why I feel like Abby's like, oh, I feel responsible, or it could have been like probably drunk driving or something like that, you know? And it's like, obviously, the th and I, that's why I feel like it lends itself into Abby's story, because for her, it's like she came back to town because she feels like I'm the I'm very good at what I do and I just want to help. And I think that's why maybe on some level she feels guilty. It's like my best friend, her, she isn't here to live her life. So my life is kind of forfeit. Like if I can die doing something good, then then it's almost like there's some equivalent exchange in that and I think that's why she's kind of I think that's we can potentially link those two points up we might even see it kind of further down the road potential in that but it, it was kind of heartbreaking and, and you know and you understand where Maria is coming from but you still kind of feel bad to see Abby torn apart but like but it's like hey when you've lost your daughter and your entire world falls apart you can understand why Maria feels the way she does I should also note to um, the actor playing her husband uh, that's I'm sure he's popped him in a lot of things but the thing I always come back to I forgot what he played was he like uh, he was the other coach, like he was the other main coach in Remember, Ti Rem Remember the Titans back in. I was like, holy crap. Uh, but nevertheless, obviously, you know, things are kind of spreading a little bit. Obviously, we find out like the little girl, Susie, her dad was Eddie. He was one of the dudes on the boat. Obviously, she contracted this situation from him because I was wondering how this spread or whatever. I was like, is it something in the water supply or something like that? But it's like, no, that's how Susie got it. And if you come in close enough proximity, some of the other people started getting sick as well. But it turns out it was too late for Eddie because when they found him, the plants were just growing out of him. And to the point, they were still growing and being active. Uh Abby and her friend Matt, who's now a cop apparently, um, ended up finding him along with Alec, who was gathering samples. So, showing you just how deadly this situation is. Because it turns out Alec is obviously studying this whole situation. Because it turns out, like, we learned. Because the thing is, both Abby and Alec both have a past. They kind of rather forget. Alec's case is that he kind of forged a lot of studies. Uh, because he found like this whole thing before like into mutagens, but it didn't pan out and so he wanted you know Just to prove he could never recreate it So he forced the situation because it's that situation of like, you know, he's a scientist It's like any scientist, you know, and it doesn't just stop the scientist anyone wants to just be remembered He wants to be remembered for his work But now after that situation he realizes it's this, this discovery like being talked about in the school and stuff like that in class Like your name being brought up like that. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool But you know at the end of the day the science is what's mattering He kind of feels like he lost sight of that because we had heard for Avery Avery was like, oh, I give you a second chance I was like, okay, so what did Alec do to kind of make it so he needed a second chance now we kind of understand that uh, but also like you know I, I like because what I like about this episode too because obviously it's the beginning it's a it's a lot of setup and it's not like because I mean cause I think it's interesting too he's not even swamp thing yet you know and I think that's such an interesting aspect to that because it's not like oh like swamp things already an established thing it's like no this is like a true full-blown origin story in this certain regard so it's interesting because obviously like by the time the Teen Titans or the Teen Titans, they kind of already who they were obviously respectively, but they weren't, you know, in the case of Titans, Doom Patrol, it was kind of a full blown origin story, but it was kind of like they had already kind of been who they were for a while. They just, you know, so it's just kind of interesting. They like obviously this is taking like even the full, full blown origin route. But even though it was like a very character and story driven aspect to the episode, it still had its moments of being like, holy crap, that scene with Eddie's body. That was disgusting, dude. Holy crap, like the the roots and plants like ripping out of his body to the point like ripping the top torso of his body. That's some like evil within Resident Evil shit. Holy crap, like especially when they were like Matt and um, Abby were walking into Eddie's house and seeing all the stuff on the wall and stuff like that. It heavily, like, but definitely the body ripping apart thing kind of reminded me. Specifically, I guess also because it takes place in Louisiana, you can't help but kind of think a little bit of the uh, Resident Evil 7 type of situation, but now I'm sitting here thinking about it, it's like, eh, like, uh, the way that body ripped apart like that, kind of, like, I, I go with some, um, 
probably more so Evil Within, but then also Resident Evil. I mean, that's there's connections there, obviously, but still, it's just kind of interesting. Uh, that scene was crazy, dude. Just like, and, and like this, like top part of his body, like limping and falling on the ground, but it also getting propped back up like that. Super effed up thing is like. Uh, Susie ended up seeing her dad like that. It's like, that's the last thing anybody needs to see. And the sad thing is, it seems like she's alone in the world because her mom died. The only person she had left was her dad. So, not bad enough that you're sick. You're sadly alone, too. It's like, jeez. And that's kind of a conversation that should be brought up, too, about Abby. Because Abby was like, oh, like, um, Shauna's family were like parents to her. So, my like, question becomes like, well, what about her family? That conversation hasn't come up at all, you know? So, they must have died when she was pretty young. So... I don't know. It's I, I just think it's like a like a, it's a lot of good character development. Um, we kind of really quickly understand this situation a little bit more because Alec basically discovers that basically on the swamp when he gathers a sample on top is obviously swamp water, but below is something else entirely. It's something that's basically affecting the DNA of a lot of like the stuff in the swamp in the sense that it's affecting like the mutagens, like some other strand of DNA that's there. And it's basically acting almost like fertilizer. It's an accelerator, and it's making plants go crazy. But it's not affecting the plants themselves. It's specifically targeting and affecting the mutagen DNA aspect of it. So there's that There's that whole aspect to it, too. So And then it turns out, obviously, there's a thing of like, okay. So I thought it was a sim simple situation of like, okay, so someone's dumping some chemicals in the swamp and kind of lean to the situation not necessarily it's not like oh this is excess chemicals like some company is born it's like no this is someone's experiment because someone's specifically taking that accelerant or whatever and they're putting it in specific spots and they're using mechanisms to kind of release it at certain points like timed intervals or whatever because this is some giant experiment or whatever and you know because obviously based on the trailer you kind of know that someone did this situation and they were like the dude behind us was like no 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 my what I'm doing has nothing to do with it, but it seems like it has everything to do with it. Maybe it's a combination. Maybe, you know, because Avery kind of makes a point of like, oh, yeah, there's something special about the swamp. That's the whole point of doing all this because I'm sure this accelerant, it's meant to make things grow because it's like if they could apply this to maybe like plants and stuff like that, that could be used as a cure. Maybe they can affect these plants and turn them into medicines, into cures, and that obviously like this could bring this, you know, town back up because, you know, make the swamp kind of a boom so that they could apply many different things from it to make the you know town uh prosper again because everyone apparently kind of taken has taken a, hook, a hit because you know the townsfolk are kind of pissing everything you know but avery is like oh the fact of the matter is i could have turned tail and ran but i can't i stayed here because this town is home and i'm gonna try and stick by it you know through all all of this so but i think it's that thing of trying to cut corners and trying to because obviously, like, it seems like there's been people that's going out multiple times before, like, people getting sent out to kind of deal with stuff in the swamp. Obviously connected to this and obviously connected to Avery. But the question becomes, like, were any of them attacked or was it our trio at the beginning? They might have been the first one. Eddie and his group, they might have been the first ones to be affected by it, so murdered you know attacked by so it's like is this the first instance of it like why now at any point in time like once again has it just gotten to the point where it's like as more and more the accelerant is pumped through the more of the swamp like is it like entirely the entire swamp or is it just a very allocated area because obviously like when alec was retrieving those other sample like the other you know vials and stuff that were spread out later on like he was i would assume they're kind of a decent amount apart because like you're trying to affect the widest range obviously so how far it's spread across the swamp is unclear. Obviously, it seems in some places that cove that they were at where everything got started, it seems like that might be the heart. That might be where everything started. But it also turns into a thing of like, well, maybe it isn't just this accelerant. Maybe there is more at play here that, once again, I was bringing up earlier, that maybe there's something special about this swamp. Something's just there. There's just, once again, maybe there's just Mother Earth is at her strongest there, that there is some spirit or something there. Because obviously that plays into what happens to Alec later on. I didn't expect him to die like that. I thought like maybe someone tries to drown him or something. Did not expect him to literally get shot twice by like a shotgun. I was like, Jesus. And someone blew up his boat too. And luckily he was still alive. But what's interesting is that the plants didn't just like devour him. It's like they poked into him. It's like they transformed. And so it's like, 
what made them decide to do that? Because it's interesting because at first, like Alec, when he was like him and Abby uh, found the boat earlier um, from the beginning of the episode, they ended he ended up reaching for the box that had the um, whatever that stuff is in there that's accelerating everything. At first, the plant kind of held him back from it, but then it moved away. So is it because it's aware of who he is? Maybe it can it it taps into his mind. Maybe it sits something in him. Maybe it felt his heart. Like I said, maybe this thing is conscious and maybe it's kind of empathic in a sense it can tell your intentions and it's like oh i know what you're trying to do so is that thing of like could it be a situation that what happens to alec at the end was it like the was the swamp choosing him was it just complete accident or was it like no you're going to be this swamp's guardian you know so i i don't know like that's where my mind is once again i've talked about it before and i'll talk about it again in case you didn't know i'm going into this knowing nothing about swamp thing so and once again it's like it's so interesting because you literally only see swamp thing at the end of the episode so it's like the entire like i said it's a whole bunch of build up but i think that's very good to kind of take things you don't want to kind of just rush to everything it's like kind of building everything out explaining how we got there i still think they kind of did a very good job of kind of getting to that point you know um, cause I was wondering, I was like, are we going to see him be human a lot longer than I kind of thought? So, but I was like, no, nope. in any episode he becomes a uh, swamp thing. Cause I was thinking it was interesting too. Cause obviously you could tell because like the moment, like Abby, like, you know, the plants are kind of chasing her, but then it's like, I think some part of Alex's mind kind of took over and it's like, I know it's you. And he was probably trying to reach out to her, but couldn't quite talk yet. Like, obviously he's trying to get acclimated to his situation, but maybe, you know, was there a design and reason for him to look the way he did? Is it just because... Because I was wondering, like, what led to him becoming Swamp Thing. It seems like it's literally the the enhanced, like, roots and stuff making him in the Swamp Thing. Because I was thinking, like, maybe, like, some of the mutagen got into him. Like, maybe it's a situation of, like, some of the samples he had with him got knocked on to him. And it's kind of like a, oh, kind of like a, uh, what am I trying to think of? Maybe, like, a... Joker situation, well not Joker specifically, um, what am I thinking, maybe kind of a Two-Face thing, I guess, like, you know how part of Two-Face, you know, like, what if it was kind of like something like that, it fell on him, and then he got mutated like that, but it seems like no straight up the plant, because I was wondering, like, if you, could you be in the water, and it don't seem like it's, it's in the water, but I think it's not to the point that, you probably have to swallow a good chunk of it, I think the plants have to enter, like, the roots carry, it like a virus and i think it has to interact with you before it gets spread i mean because it doesn't see i mean to be fair and it's something i brought up from the trailer i don't know if it's a thing of like that stuff can make you hallucinate or not we don't know the full effects of what it does yet you know because the fact is it hasn't 100 percent spread to other i mean it has spread from Susie to other people but we don't know like you know obviously it seems like it's a direct contact type of situation but we still don't 100 percent know like what that necessarily entails um, obviously, like, I wasn't expecting a cleanup job this quickly. I'm wondering, because Alec had already brought this up to Avery before, of like, oh, I think this stuff, you know, there's some mutagen, blah, 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 blah. Like, he brought that up to Avery, but Avery kind of pushed him off. I think Avery sent that dude out there to cover the trash, but then he, the dude was like, oh, I see you do it. Like, I'm sure that wasn't the plan. Like, oh, go out there and kill Avery. It's like, the person going to pick up all that stuff found Avery and put him down just because it's like, we can't have anyone uh, telling people that there's something more to this, so they killed him. That was that person's decision on their own. I'm sure Avery's not going to appreciate that because it's like, no matter what you were doing, you literally caused more problems by leaving a body. It's like, well, how else were I supposed to handle the situation? We'll ultimately see what ends up being the case with that. But there's other little things that kind of got introduced in this episode, too. Um, there's Liz and the woman named Xanadu. I'm assuming that might be like her grandmother or something. But a Liz works with, like, she's a reporter, so... Obviously, I think that's going to be a big part in trying to deal with this whole everything and potentially, you know, play a part in, like, oh, probably the myth and the legend spreading of, like, Swamp Thing and stuff like that. I am curious, like, whether or not there's going to be any connected tissue between these TV shows. Like, obviously, Doom Patrol kind of, like, undid some of the continuity that was set up in Teen Titans, obviously. Uh, Doom Patrol kind of became its own thing. So, I wonder, the fact is they did that makes me wonder, is it a thing of, like... They are making it so these shows aren't connected, you know. So that's why I'm wondering: Does this take place in the same universe as Doom Patrol and Teen Titans? I mean, in Titans, do Titans and Doom Patrol even take place in the same universe anymore? Is it going to be just kind of like that vague thing of what they're doing with the movies of being like, if it connects later on at some point, sure. But for now, everything's kind of separate till we kind of come up with a bigger game plan. I'm curious because it doesn't seem like they're setting this up to be like an Arrowverse situation. It's just kind of like, hey, these are the shows; they are what they are, kind of so. 
Uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm fine with either way, but it'd be kind of cool to know that it all did take place in the same universe. Because there was part of me wondering about this whole mutagen thing. I'm like, this. I mean, I'm, I knew it would be different, but I'm like, I'm wondering would it in any shape or form be connected to metahumans? Like, would it be kind of a similar DNA strand type of situation similar to a metahuman? Could that be where this comes from, or is it just completely synthetic, like, uh, you know, well, whatever this stuff is causing all this. Either way, like I said, I am very interested already in this show. I'm very intrigued to see and get a better feel of the show as he progress. Like, obviously, like I said, it feels like almost like a monster show or something, just like the way it was, like, set up and everything. So I'm curious to see if they keep that tone for the rest of the season, especially into the next episode, especially now that Swamp Thing's been set up, like, what this all entails. I'm very excited to see what the next episode has in store for us. And now moving on to this week's episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., a great episode. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. We finally find out what Deke has been up to. I love that thing in the beginning because I'm like, okay, I'm like, what, what's up with this? I'm like, oh, I was thinking like, oh, he went off and became an actor or something, and he's up there like, you know, filming a movie or something. But then the crease shows up, and I'm like, wait, what? What's up with this? And then like, it's Daisy. I'm like, wait, what is this? And it's like, it's the framework. I'm like, oh my God. It's for one, it's the fact that he's going off and started his own company obviously using proprietary uh, shield technology as well as it's stuff he knows about from the future obviously the framework obviously the framework was never like a mainstream thing it was supposed to but it obviously stayed a very local thing because obviously it had issues the whole ADA situation that whole thing so it never really went anywhere but to be fair it's like you know that's untapped potential and obviously like he dealt with the framework in the future so he was familiar with it enough to bring it present day obviously hopefully it doesn't end up becoming the whole issue that it became before I don't think it will but there's still the possibility and I, I, cause I kept wondering, like, you know, it kept bugging me. I was like, okay, what about D? Once again, season five's finale left me being like, I don't know whether that's supposed to represent he disappeared completely or was that just him leaving? That's what I wasn't sure about because with the whole grand scheme of things. Also, side note, I've been calling him Deacon before now. Like, and I, I think there was like a Thoughts and Theories video. I called him Deacon. And it's like, I guess I just assumed Deke was short for Deacon. Once again, I'm just terrible with names in general. I didn't realize his name was just simply Deke. I never looked it up before. That's interesting. Um, at least from what I was looking up, and it seemed like it was Deacon. I don't remember they called him Deacon before, and that's why. Or is it just because I'm thinking of 12 Monkeys because there's a character named Deacon. They just call him Deke, which is interesting. I figured I'd circle back to it because this is something I brought up before. The actress who plays Snowflake, her name is Brooke Williams. She played Hannah in 12 Monkeys. That's something I meant to bring up one episode, but I didn't. I left it in the comments comment one episode but regardless um nevertheless also didn't know she was a new zealand actor until i looked at it. i was like man actors in their accent dude she's that's so i would have never guessed she was a new zealander uh but you do hear that she does kind of it sounds, sounds like she keeps her she's keeping her accent uh for um this character so that's pretty cool but nevertheless i'm going on a huge tangent but I love that he's got his own company and everything. He's got a girlfriend, Sequoia, which I'm like, that's super awkward. She must not have looked and see what he was exactly doing in the framework because it's like Daisy's there and she's slapping him. It's like, even that's kind of twisted. That even in this situation, you got a girlfriend, you're still thinking about Daisy, which is like, hey, you're like, you're in love with Daisy. So it shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but still. So it's just interesting to see that we're in this situation. Um... Obviously, this ties in with the episode in the sense of like, okay, so Coulson, well, Sarge and his people kill this dude, but then he starts turning to crystal and stuff, and it's like pouring out of his body and stuff. Like, it's like, okay, so what the hell is up with that? Well, it seems like that's the exact reason why they're coming after Deacon. And like the moment it's like, oh, like you don't belong here or whatever. And it's like, oh, you're after anomalies. Like granted, they, even Jocko was like, yeah, he reads a little bit different. You know, even saying that, you know, like maybe strange is kind of the norm around here. And which to a certain extent it is. I guess because of their readings, they pick up like some sort of anomalies. It's like that's how they're tracking whatever those things are inside of people. Like we end up finding out it's like some like alien parasitic kind of it looks more like a bat to me, but they kept referring to it. Well, Keller kept referring to it as a bird, but um, I guess it creates an anomaly from a, a human becomes an anomaly because of that. And they look at Deacon as one as well, which is interesting because that's technically what's going on in space, too, because that's why Fitz is being targeted, because technically he's an anomaly throwing the universe off. So it's like, is Sarge and his people bad people they, i mean granted they kill indiscriminately but maybe there's a reason why they're tracking down these creatures specifically maybe for them it's like any planet they've destroyed it's like maybe in their own way they are saving plants because like oh we got to destroy this planet because it's infected with these creatures or whatever i don't know 
So maybe their point is to try and track down these anomalies, these creatures, before they become widespread like a virus, you know? So, because it seems like basically based on what Benson was kind of saying, it's like obviously it seems like they get inside of you, they kind of heat up and become like, they make you into like a self-destructive thing. And it's like obviously like the, they like I don't know whether it's like they're like ticking time bombs or just like spike bombs or whatever the case may be. We're still not really, we don't really get a chance to see what they're capable of doing, but it's like, that's so interesting. Like, obviously, like like I said, um, Enoch's people, obviously, like, are going after Fitz once again because he's an anomaly. So it's interesting. Because, I mean, Fit, you know, because I think it's not just the fact is that Deke, Deke I'm saying about to do it again, Deke is from the future. It's also the fact is his dad is technically dead. Uh, his dad is technically alive. So it kind of puts him in that weird spot where he's technically a paradox. So it's probably not just Fitz throwing things off balance. It's probably Deke too, because he's also most likely from a future that doesn't exist anymore. But then again, maybe it does if he's still here, um, depending on how time travel works and stuff like that. We don't know if time travel in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. works the same way. It doesn't seem like it does. It doesn't seem like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., that's also something to be considered, doesn't have the same time travel logic as Endgame. Now, when you look back on Season 5, you're like, yeah, it, it, you don't check by... Well, to be fair, in their case, we don't know because they haven't traveled to the past. i, I got to correct that. They've only traveled to the future. They've never traveled. They traveled back to the original time. Sure, but they've never traveled to the past. So we don't know technically if this had the same time travel rules as Endgame or not. But, uh, because it's time travel and a different means not using the quantum realm, so maybe the rules you could potentially look at as, like, a, it's different. I don't know. That's something maybe they probably won't even tackle, so, but like I said, time is working a little differently, so, but, um, I still think maybe you could technically count him as a paradox, because that means that, that new timeline, it depends on, you know, that thing of where they're, like, old timelines disappear. I don't think they do. I think it is that whole thing of, like, just branches. So a new branch was created in this timeline that they live in now after they changed everything. Deke's living, so that timeline he came from still exists, and that's still Earth being, in, you know, destroyed like it is. That timeline still exists, but now he's living in this one. Once again, that time travel is always that, oh, it's always kind of hard thing to kind of comprehend because you're because of all this different time travel stuff your brain goes in different ways or just like depending on how the continuity of time travel works in each respective thing they all do it kind of a little bit differently while doing it the same it's a whole thing i'm going into a tangent so i do apologize but i do love um obviously it turns out like trevor is actually it's like oh you're my best friend and everything oh it turns out actually you were an agent of shield you were here to keep an eye on me uh, the way may puts it his babysitting job and it's like oh here's deke he's cold yellow and everything he's like i feel like i should be in a little so he's like oh is daisy coming is you know fitz and simon i do love the fact is that you know daisy was the first one he brought up of course um i do love it though like obviously everyone respectively like fight i love mac fighting Pax and kind of kicking his ass and you have deke come over and shoots him with the icer multiple times bam 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 and you have mac kind of lowering and be like calm down dude um i love him rescuing his girlfriend sequoia and she's like he's like wait are you are you posting this right now she's like no and then she was even trying to bring the boba with them he's like no 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 like, the fact is, I'm very good at running away and surviving, so come with me. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's, like, awesome. She's like, oh, he's so visionary and stuff like that. It's it's so cool. Because um, I love it. He was like, S.H.I.E.L.D. is coming to get you. She's like, dick. And he's like, okay, I'm coming to get you. And she slapped him because she was like, what took you so long? I love that. Um, but I love that they ended up knocking Chaco out by putting him in the... Um, framework and I love that Mac is looking at it and he sees the Daisy like in like the fake Daisy and he looks to Deke and he's like Deke's like I will give you two percent of this entire company if you do not say a word to anyone about this it's like because the last thing he wants is even Daisy to find about that the sad thing is it's kind of interesting because like maids like did no one tell him about Fitz it's like Mac was like, it's, I felt like it wasn't really my place to say anything. I guess it's like, that was kind of more on Simmons, but Simmons probably didn't. It's like, no, we're going to find Fitz, so it's going to be okay. It's still going to be weird and awkward because it's going to be a Fitz that doesn't know him, hasn't spent time with him, knows that, oh, you're my grandfather, and that you're his grandson, you know? So that's kind of that weird situation, too. Uh, just like Simmons has to go through that weird situation of, you're my husband. She brought it up last episode. I was like, you're my husband, but technically you're not because we're this version of you and I didn't get married. It's all a thing, you know, so 
it's really interesting but um other things obviously like there's a the whole killer thing obviously he wanted to talk to mac about you know obviously him and yo yo but then it's that awkward thing of like you know mac is like basically if you bring up what you're about to bring up hypothetically speaking i'd have to split you up you know because obviously you know when it comes to working with someone in the field even if it's someone you care about it can have a tendency to cloud your judgment hypothetically hypothetically speaking is your judgment cloud and he's like no good and just kind of leaves it at that yo yo walks in a little bit awkward, but it's like, oh, you talked to him about it, and it's like, well, yeah, because like the fact is, he's like, it's not just about him separate, potentially separating us. I think Mac actually still potentially has feelings for you, and she's like, why would you tell me that? It's like, because like if, if before anything happens between us, I want you to know that, you know, because I think for him, it's like, before you go making this decision, yeah, you should know how Mac feels, that he isn't over you, that he still has feelings for you, but I love it being like, but I want you to know I'm all in. I'm ready to fight for this. I mean, not fight, fight, because, you know, Mac terrifies me, but emotionally, and I'm like, you're a good guy, Keller, and it's like, I didn't expect his story to play out the way it did, I was like, dude, like, that alien thing get inside of him, once again, it almost seems like it might be ticking people into bombs, because it's turning them into self-destruct, and it looked terrible, like, the sense of, like, when he was, uh, the thing was inside of him, his arm gets stretched out, you can hear bones cracking, it's just... It was terrible, and Yo-Yo ended up stabbing him to kill the thing. Because they're under the impression, like, Sarge put that there. But it's like, no, he that thing was already there inside of the dude he ended up killing. The knife kills. It, does, it seems, at the very least, maybe it didn't kill the thing. At the very least, it shuts it down temporarily. Because the moment they pulled out the knife, it went back to being alive. So either it wasn't completely dead or given enough time, like... The knife only slows it down, not a permanent means of killing it. I'd assume it was a permanent means, considering the fact is they left it there, but maybe, I don't know. Either way, it's just kind of sad that Keller's story ends like that, you know, especially because, like, things were, you know, getting in a good place between him and Yo-Yo and everything, and it's just sad. It's also interesting, too, that Bitson seems like he doesn't know everything, because he saw, like, Yo-Yo does her thing and, like, straps him down. He's like, how did you do that? It's like... You don't know about it? Do you? I assume he must know about Inhumans, but I guess maybe Yo-Yo's the first Inhuman he's ever directly interacted with, because I just thought that was kind of interesting. It's just interesting to me that he didn't know, that. Like, either he didn't know Yo-Yo was a Inhumans, because I feel like Inhumans are a big enough plot point, yeah, especially because in Season 4 that was a big enough thing, so I guess he just didn't realize Yo-Yo was one, Not real, at least not knowing what she was capable of doing, so... Sad to see that story kind of play out the way it did, and obviously there's a whole um, situation with... Um, May getting taken by Sarge because I think he knows that she's May and the fact is she knows him as Coulson and everything so he's trying to get answers about like what they know because they're trying to get into they wanted Deacon at first because obviously he's an anomaly but he's also a talker I love like he's talking to Coulson and everything it's like oh yeah what's up like obviously there's no telling how much he told him obviously he brought up May he brought up Fitz a lot probably a lot of shield stuff because he's thinking like oh Coulson's memory got wiped it's like what you should be thinking and considering like if Coulson's memory got wiped then why would he know and remember you? It's, that should have been a key sign for Deacon, but Deke, see what I'm, I keep doing that, uh, but he didn't realize. Um, I also love, too, the fact is that, like, oh, this uh, fake Coulson, if he wants to kill Deke, he's going to get in line because uh, Mac was so pissed because he's looking, he's realizing that there's so much uh, tech from S.H.I.E.L.D., once again, that pri pri uh, pro proprietary shield tech that he's profiting off of and stuff like that it's like because they weren't keeping an eye on him it's like i let deke do whatever he wants to do i don't care but it's like maybe we should have been keeping a closer eye on him considering what he's doing and stuff like that i love that he even makes a reference to like it's like oh like we're work you're working on this prosthetic arm with a shield that's in it it's like come on deke literally every idea is stuff you're stealing from shield or just because you're from the future i mean you do see that he is trying to do good with it though he's trying to make it so that n no one has to worry about food because obviously he knows that's kind of like obviously an issue in the time he's from just in case the world ever did get to a point like that potentially he or you know even the current situation with just food i think he you know he wants to help out so it's not like i'm mean, obviously making a big profit off of this he's taking advantage of the situation he's from the future and his connections to shield but the fact of the matter is you gotta admit at least he's still trying to do good with everything so that's pretty dope so i think that's it's just it's just so interesting all that and then finally the freaking ending i love the end credit scene is just Sequoia's recordings and just like her kind of basically in her 
I don't know if she's necessarily, I just, I'd assume she's kind of, she's an influencer and everything. I think she even references that. But, like, that ending and everything, it's like, oh, like, posting everything. I love it. And then, like, her and Trevor, and it's like, oh, is that going to be a thing? It's like her and Deke done, which is like, hey, Deke obviously has feelings for Daisy and stuff like that. But obviously it's going to be interesting because he's going to have to be filled in about everything. Obviously they've got Jocko and they've got Pax, so... They're a little closer to figuring out what the hell this whole situation is, like what Sarge and his people are doing here. Obviously, you know, Deke being filled in about everything, too. The whole conversation of, like, should I even really be here right now? That's probably going to come up next time, too. I mean, depending on how they handle this whole situation, because once again, it's like, you know, are we going to probably bounce back and forth every other episode? Because I think everything seems like it's two separate storylines going on at the same time, which is interesting because that's kind of how Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. typically operates. Like, obviously, the first half of the season is one arc. The second half of the season is a different arc. Typically, they are tied in some shape or form. Like, it's not like, oh, they're completely separate. They're usually tied and built upon each other. But I think this time, it's because like, obviously because it's a shorter season, I think they're basically taking two things and putting them all into one. So that's going to be definitely an interesting mix i think it almost feels like they're doing two arcs at the same time rather than kind of splitting it up into two arcs separately in the season that's how i kind of feel about it so it's it's definitely gonna be interesting to see where the next episode takes us with all of this but really that's all i want to talk about so the next time we meet be happy be safe live light to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye